Welcome to this UFIC webinar on consumer response to portion information on food and drink packaging. My name is Josephine Wills and I'm the Director General of the European Food Information Council. And I'm sitting with Dr. Monique Ratz and she's co-director of the Food, Consumer Behaviour and Health Research Centre at the University of Surrey in the UK. In today's climate of overweight and obesity concerns across Europe, the amount that consumers eat or drink is just as important as what they eat. So we've designed this study with the University of Surrey to gain insights into how consumers interpret portion information on packaging. Monique's got a background and experience in nutrition and in consumer-related research in a wide variety of projects, including nutrition labeling. And this work also builds on UFIX earlier nutrition labeling research. Now there's going to be questions and answers at the end of the webinar. So remember to type in your questions on the screen in front of you at any time throughout the uh, webinar. Now in this presentation, we're going to be looking at the research methodology of the study, um, how consumers feel that portion information is relevant to them and what meaning they have about portion information. What consumers think determines portion size and who determines portion size and how portion information on packaging helps consumers to use nutrition information. And also some work on how product size influences the perception of what constitutes a portion. So now I'm going to hand over to Monique and she's going to take you through the results of the presentation. Thank you, Joe. I'm now going to start by explaining how we carried out the research we used a representative sample of 13,117 respondents in six countries, France, Germany, Poland, Spain, Sweden, and the UK. About half the consumers in our survey were men, half women, and they were aged between 18 and 65. We carried out a pilot study in July 2010, and that was followed by the main research in July through September. We used an online data capture method, a web-based survey, because this was regarded as being the most efficient uh, route to collect data and doing that in a reasonable amount of time. The questionnaire consisted of a range of questions. There were questions on what a consumer's concept was of a portion and who they understood established them and how. There were questions on the use of portion size information when using nutrition information and there were questions relating to product size, to perceptions of what constitutes a portion. We also collected some demographic information, and we had a series of questions that helped us segment our consumers, and these captured information on their current behavior and attitudes to things like health and their subjective and objective nutrition knowledge and how numerate they were. To give you a sense of what our sample was like, this slide gives an indication of the different segments in terms of their interest in, in health, and we see that there are some differences across the different countries, with consumers in countries like Spain and France being more interested in health than those in Poland. In terms of numeracy, again, we see some differences across countries, with consumers in Poland having lower levels of numeracy than those in other countries like the UK and France. In terms of subjective knowledge, we see differences in segments in the different countries. Consumers in Sweden felt they had higher levels of nutrition knowledge than, for instance, the consumers in Poland. In terms of objective knowledge, we used a scale from Grunet et al. And we see again here differences across countries with consumers in Poland having lower levels of nutrition knowledge than those in France and the UK. In the context of work on portions, it is also important to look at consumer understanding of energy requirements. We were interested in whether consumers had a sense of their calorie needs and asked them a series of questions about this. On this slide, you see the question we asked, how many calories per day do you think active adults need? And we asked them to answer the question for both men and women. And using a sliding scale, you see them on both the left and right hand of the screen, Consumers were asked to indicate at what level they thought both men and women needed energy, and the slider scale moved in increments of 250 calories. This next slide shows the results for the men. We see the most frequently given answer is 2,500, and that is the correct recommended energy requirement. We do, however, see a spread with some of the consumers stating it's lower and some saying it's higher. 
Across all countries, the average number of calories that respondents think an active male should have is 2,458, with the Spanish giving the lowest average score. This slide gives the results for women. Again, we see the same pattern. The peak of results, particularly in the UK, is around the 2,000, which is the recommended amount. But across all countries, the overall average number of calories required by women is seen to be 1,893, which is actually below the recommended 2,000. And we see that across all countries. Another thing that's interesting to note is that for both men and women, the distribution of calories required per day was most narrow for the UK. This indicates that there's a greater consensus of opinion in this country. The next set of slides looks at what information consumers are looking for on labels. We ask consumers about a whole series of kinds of information that appear on labels and how often they looked for this sort of information on food and drink packaging. Overall, most respondents claimed to look for price and use by date on products always or often, and only around one third of consumers looked for portion information. If we look for some country differences in terms of what people are looking for on uh, food packaging, we notice things like in the UK, on average, consumers look for nutrition information more often than do consumers in other countries, whereas in France, consumers tend to look for nutrition information less often than consumers in other countries. Interestingly, Poland looks for portion size information more often than other countries, and Sweden would be the country that looks for portion size information less often. This next slide shows us how, when we segment consumers, whether there are differences in terms of whether they're looking for information, portion information on labels. We see that those consumers who are in the segment who have a high interest in health, that they are more often looking for portion information on labels than are those consumers with a low interest in health. The next set of slides looks at the meaning and relevance of portion information. What do consumers think portion information is, and who do they think determines it, and how do they think it's determined? In the first instance, we asked consumers what they understood a portion to be. We did this by using an open-ended question. So on food and drink packaging, we often see portion sizes. What do you understand a portion to mean? And people were able to describe in their own words what they thought this meant. And in most cases, people describe portions to be what people should be eating. In particular, we see that in France and Spain. They regarded portion information to be what the amount that one person or an adult should eat. In some cases, people also didn't refer to a person. They talked about an amount of food. And so we see, for instance, that consumers referred to a portion being an amount like 25 or 100 grams of food, particularly in Germany. Of particular interest to us was to better understand whether or not consumers distinguished between what could be seen as very different definitions of portions. We wanted to know whether they saw a portion as what they were likely to eat or whether they saw it as what they should be eating. We asked two questions in separate parts of the questionnaire and we see that overall consumers are more likely to think that a portion is what a person should eat rather than what they are likely to eat. This is particularly the case in Sweden. The next kind of question that we asked people was whether or not they regarded portion information to be relevant to them. So the question asked was, is portion information on food and drink packaging relevant to you? And overall, just half of respondents considered portion information to be relevant, but we see some big differences across countries, with Spain particularly considering portion information to be more relevant than in other countries. Again, looking at the segments is interesting here. If we look at the segments um, who have a high interest in health, we see that they more often state that portion information is relevant to them than those with a low interest in health. To delve more deeply into why portion information is relevant, we asked an open-ended question. This slide gives an overview of the sorts of reasons that people gave why portion information was relevant. For the most part, they said it helped them determine the amount to buy, prepare, or eat. Other reasons given were that it gave them guidance on how much one should eat, or that it helped them monitor food and nutrition intake. Then asking the question as to why portion information was not relevant, people, for the most part, talked about it being because people are different, and people behave differently. 
But interestingly, some of our consumers couldn't answer this question and couldn't come up with a reason, and that was particularly the case in the UK. So in summary, most respondents claim to look for information like price and use by date on products always or often, and only a third of consumers look for portion information regularly. The majority of consumers define a portion to mean what should be consumed by one person, and portion information is relevant only to just under half of the respondents that we surveyed, but this differs by country. The reasons why portion information is relevant to respondents is because it helps them determine the amount to buy, eat or prepare, and it gives them guidance on how much they should be eating, and it helps them monitor their food or nutritional intake. Reasons why portion information might not be equally relevant to everybody are because people recognise that people are different and that people behave differently. We were also interested in how consumers perceive portion sizes to be set and asked them an open-ended question again. In most cases, consumers didn't know how this was done, particularly this was the case in the UK, but where people were able to come up with an answer, they suggested that it was based on the number of calories in a product. And when we asked them who they thought decided portion sizes, and this was again done as an open-ended question, in most cases people thought it was the food producer, so the company that manufactured the food. And again, people here also sometimes couldn't come up with an answer, again, particularly in the UK. And the other group that they thought set portion sizes were health professionals, people like nutritionists and dietitians. In summary, most consumers don't know how portion sizes are set, if they come up with a reason, it's based um, that they think that they're based on calories. And when asked who sets portion sizes, most consumers think that it's the food producers and in some cases think it's nutritionists and dietitians. But there are quite a few consumers that don't know who sets portion sizes, particularly in the UK. The next section is on consumers' portion size information preferences. And so when they're presented with nutrition information in terms of portion sizes, how would they like that portion size to be given to them? We also have some questions on the importance of portion information on packs, perceptions of portion sizes, and whether or not consumers want more portion information. So this slide shows us those foods from a set of 19 foods that we asked about where consumers prefer nutrition information to be provided per pack. So this is foods like crisps, ready meals, and pizza, and their preferred format for nutrition information is per pack. But we see some variation across the different types of formats that could be presented. This set of food shows us the foods where people prefer to have the nutrition information provided per 100 grams or per 100 mils. And it's particularly the case for the liquids, the soft drinks and the soups, where people prefer to have their portion information provided per 100 grams or mils. In those foods where foods appear in units, things like biscuits, breads, slices of meat, there is a preference for having nutrition information per unit, particularly for biscuits and breads, and by some consumers for other products like cooked or sliced meat. This next slide presents an overview of those foods where people prefer to have their nutrition information provided per portion in grams or milliliters. But overall, there are no foods where this was the most preferred style of presenting nutrition information. There were also a number of foods where some of the consumers preferred to have the information provided per household measure, um, and this was the case for condiments, breakfast cereals, and soup. So overall, we also asked people how important it was to have portion information on packs for the different food categories. And overall, there was little difference between food categories, but where people found it to be more important, it was on the ready meals, pizza products, and less so on the nuts and dried fruit. This next slide provides an overview of the findings with regard to consumer perceptions of portion sizes that they come across in the marketplace. For 15 of the 19 products, at least half the respondents think that the stated portion size is exactly right. Where they differ, they are likely to think that the portions that they come across are far or slightly too small, rather than far or slightly too big. This is particularly the case for ready meals. We also asked people whether they wanted more portion information. Respondents were slightly more likely to agree than disagree that they would like 
portion information to be more widely available on food and drink packaging, but we see some differences across countries with Spain being more interested in seeing more information. So overall, the preferred presentation format for portion information depends on the type of food. Per pack is the preferred format for most food types tested. Per 100 grams or 100 mils is the preferred format for six of the food types. And where a food type can be split into single units, nutrition information by unit is the most or second most preferred format. For 15 of the 19 products that we looked at, at least half the respondents thought that the stated portion sizes were exactly right, but where they disagreed, there were more people likely to think they were too small than too big. Respondents were slightly more likely to agree that the portion information should be more widely available on food and drink packs. The next section of the presentation is about how portion information can help consumers use nutrition information. And we'll look at things like the extent to which they can read information on nutrition labels, carry out simple calculations, and carry out more complex calculations. We did this work by showing them different nutrition labels and asking them to answer uh, questions based on the information provided in the label. In this slide, all consumers were asked how many grams of saturated fat were in 100 grams of the product. So, in other words, they're just having to read a piece of information off the label. And we see that 79% of consumers were able to do that correctly. And we see some variation across countries. On this next slide, we see how consumers can carry out simple calculations using information from a nutrition label. So they were asked, looking at the nutrition table, how many portions are there in this package? So they had to carry out a simple division, 500 divided by 50. And we see that 78.6% of consumers give the correct answer. But again, we see some variation across countries. In this next slide, we see two labels. Half our sample saw label one, half saw label two, and they differ in terms of the size of the portion. They were asked to look at the nutrition table and state how many grams of either fiber or saturated fat were in a portion of the product. And what we see is those consumers who had to do the more simple calculation were more often correct. So 60% of those consumers gave the correct answer, whereas those who had to do a much more complicated calculation, only 15% of the consumers provided the right answer and took a lot longer to do that. In this next slide, we see two different labels. They differ in terms of whether or not they provide the nutrition information proportion or not. Half the consumers saw one label, half the other, and both were asked to state how many grams of fiber were in a portion of the product. And what we see is, of course, that those consumers who are provided with the proportion information just need to read the information and are thus much more frequently correct than those who only uh, were given the per 100 gram information. This finding is more exaggerated in the next slide, where we're comparing the label that has the more complicated portion calculation to do and those consumers being given just the 100 gram information, only in 15% of the cases give the correct answer, and those where the portion information is also provided have much higher levels of correct answers, 86.4%, and they're also a lot more quick in providing that answer. So in conclusion, most consumers are able to accurately read and relay nutrient information from labels, and as the calculation gets more complex, calculating nutrient content proportion from per 100 gram information becomes more difficult, with few consumers giving the correct answer and taking longer to do the calculations. When portion information is present, there are more correct answers and the response time is quicker. And finally, in the last section of the presentation, we'll be looking at how product size influences the perception of what constitutes a portion. In the first case, we provided consumers with photos of different numbers of a given product, and we showed them chicken nuggets, sweets, and biscuits, and some consumers were shown a lot of a product, and some were shown few of a product. And this next slide gives an example of two of the photos that we used. So half the sample saw the screenshot on the left, and half saw the screenshot on the right, and so some of them saw a small pack, some saw a large pack, but both were asked to say how many sweets make up a portion of this food product. 
And this slide provides an overview of the results for all three product categories. And we see for chicken, sweets and biscuits that the bigger the pack, the more units people think are in a portion. And so, for instance, for the sweets, if they're shown 10 sweets, people think there are five sweets in a portion. And if they're shown a bag of 60 sweets, they think there are 10 sweets in a portion. And interestingly, Poland, in all cases, when shown the larger number of products, think that there are more units to a portion than do the other countries. In our next set of questions, we ask people the number of portions they think are in different sizes of the same product. And we looked at four groups of products, crisps, confectionery bars, lasagna, and soft drinks. In this slide, we see one of the screenshots of how consumers were shown the products. This is the photo for the lasagna. Consumers were asked to move the slider up and down the scale to indicate how many portions or part portions were in the photo that they were shown. And these are the results for the lasagna. And if we look at the 400 gram pack, most consumers thought that this constituted one portion. If we look at the 1000 gram pack, most consumers thought that this was two portions. And for the 1600 gram pack, most consumers thought that this was four portions. Interestingly, looking at the mean portion size, we see an increase as the pack gets larger, the mean portion size increases. And this slide shows the results for the packs of crisps. When shown a 34.5 gram bag of crisps, most consumers think that it's for one person. When shown the 120 gram bag of crisps, we see a wider range with some consumers saying it's for two people and other consumers saying it's for four people. And again, here we see the same pattern. The larger the pack size, the larger the average portion size. And then looking at the results for the confectionery bars, when shown an 18 gram bar of confectionery, people thought this was an amount for one or less than one portion. When shown the 45 gram bar, people thought again that this was one portion. But when shown a pack which contained two 35 gram bars, most consumers thought that this was two portions. And again, we see the same pattern here. The bigger the pack size, the bigger the mean portion size. And then finally, the results for the soft drink beverages. Looking at the smaller beverage sizes, the 100 ml, 150 ml, 250 ml, and 330 ml can, in all of those cases, most consumers think that that constitutes one portion. But then when we ask the question about the 500 ml bottle, most consumers think that that's for two people. And then when we look at bottle sizes like 1,000 ml and 1,500 ml, we see that there's less agreement as to how many portions are in a bottle like this. Again, it's interesting to look at the mean portion size. We see an increase um, in portion size as the pack size goes up. But interestingly, looking at the biggest bottle, the 1500 ml bottle, the mean portion size of 212 is still under the commonly used portion size of 250 ml that we see on the market. So in conclusion, uh, the size of pack influences perceived portion size. The perceived number of portions in larger packs is in line with unpacked portion information. And for a majority of consumers, smaller soft drink packs are considered to be one serving, regardless of their actual volume. And the average perceived portion size increases slightly with the size of the bottle, but stays below the 250 ml suggested portion size. With different sizes and pack formats of confectionery bars, a single bar was considered as one portion and a pack containing two bars was considered as two portions by most consumers in the study. Now, in conclusion, this study really provides us evidence that portion information on pack, in addition to 100 gram or 100 mil information, can help consumers use nutrition information correctly and quickly. Consumers view portions as what they should be eating rather than what they are likely to eat. Portion size information can play a role in helping consumers to manage the amount of food that they eat. The challenge, of course, is still to encourage them to look for and use the information. <laughs>